This week on Inside the Cleveland Browns, a legend welcomes home a champion. Hear what kind of leader Christian Kirksey will be for the defense. I'm, I'm more of a guy that likes to, rather than just to tell somebody something, I'd rather show them. And how does Joe Hayden keep his sneaker store stocked? Honestly, I probably have about 600 of my shoes that I bought in. That and much more coming up next. What's up, Dog Pound? Welcome to an all-new edition of Inside the Cleveland Browns. I'm Dustin Fox. My partner is Sarah Carnes, as always. Sarah, what a week for Cleveland. The Cavs, they brought home the championship. How exciting is that? More than a million people filled the streets of downtown Cleveland to celebrate. Well, and I was up in a chopper. Don't ask me how I got up there, but we were over top of the city. It was incredible. It looked incredible. Loved yeah, your pictures. Yeah. And boy, it felt like everyone was downtown. Mm -hmm. Bertie Kozar on the float with MGK, and Joe Hayden, who rode with Tristan Thompson, Ernest Biner, and of course, Jim Brown, who gave the trophy over to LeBron. Sarah, we know this is a Browns town, of course, and can you imagine what it's going to be like when the Cleveland Browns win the Super Bowl? I love how you said when, because mm -hmm. I'm a believer. I think it's going to happen. Yeah, and when it happens, it'll probably be because some young players like Christian Kirksey, you know, stepping up on and off the field. Yeah, you're so right. Let's take a look at this third-year linebacker and what he feels about his role in the defense. I'm, I'm a firm believer in, in linebackers being, being a leader on the defense. You know, you just got to learn how to follow the, the older guys and see the way it's supposed to be done. And then when it's your turn, then, you know, you just take over and lead. And That's right, Dylan. That's right, big fella. What up, Crow? Hey, wow. Let's have a great one, brother. Let's start hey. the week off. Here we go. Finish three. One, two, three. Man. And that's what I'm going to continue to do throughout my whole career, just go out there and try to be a leader and just have fun. Woo! I'm going to get in the road. Yeah. Yeah. This defense so far in OTAs, you know, we've been moving around, we've been uh, running to the ball, everybody's been in uh, real good chemistry. So in training camp, whenever you have a, a lot of good, good guys like that, it's, it's pretty good because you know like at every position you're stacked and then it's, it's going to be like great competition. So I'm, I'm ready for that. I'm always looking forward to training camp because you know you need that. Uh, you're going into the season and the beginning of the season, you know, you just got to you know, we got a lot of good guys in the room. Got to start off right, start off fresh, so training camp is, is, is so important. Coach Jackson, he always stressed on, on winning. Uh, that's our leader, and, you know, we putting all, all our faith into him, and I believe that we're going to get it done. Come on, man, that's what we got to do. Yup. Yeah. <laughs> you got to be the best in the world at what you do. Let's go. In the words of Muhammad Ali. He's teaching us how to be become better pros and become winners. And he's trying to change this thing around. And I, I believe that he's, he's, he's on the right path and he's doing a great job. He put together some of the best coaches in the country. Ray Horton, he really makes you become more of a student of the game and just, you know, enhance your game as far as mentally. He's not a guy that gets mad or just, you know, just go crazy and yell. He's real calm. And sometimes guys need that. And I think he's, he's that, that type of person that you respect and that type of defensive coordinator that you can respect. Everyone went through that process of you know, grasping the play, but that's one of the hardest things of being in the league is from the neck up. So it's meant to be a lot. You, you're a rookie or you know, you're know you not used to having all this information at one time. So don't think like, oh man, maybe I'm behind everyone. Believe it or not, that's how you learn more when, you, when you're not uptight. So that's something I try to uh, pass to the younger guys. I'm, I'm more of a guy that likes to, rather than just to tell somebody something, I'd rather show them. When you're a rookie and you used to being the man in college, when you come into the league, you know, you, you're that freshman all over again. Um, you're trying to get good with the coaches, you're trying to get, you know, good with, with your teammates, and your head is kind of spinning. You take a, a huge jump from rookie year to your second year, and then now in your third year, you know, you got everything out the way, all, all the, the questions, all the learning the playbook and how to learn the playbook, you know, you got that all out the way and when it's year three, you know, you hit the ground running. They bring another. So I stay, I stay in the box, right? And then when you look at the playbook, you know, uh, you, you grasp all the concepts already and, you know, you just start to learn faster. Check Yogi, check Yogi, check Yogi. Yep, 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 yep. And you're just comfortable, and that's the biggest thing of being in the NFL is being comfortable. Year three is definitely, definitely big, and you know, I just can't wait to see how it's gonna unfold. 
I love hearing him talk about how the game is played from the neck up. I'm telling you what, as a young player, you have to understand it's, it's tough to learn the playbook. He gets it. Yeah, it's so true. It's something all the new guys have to go through. Now keep it right here, Dog Pound. We'll be right back. Next on Inside the Cleveland Browns, Spencer Drango on the football player he looks up to the most. You know, his career speaks for itself. Um, and just being around him and seeing the type of person he is off the field um, just makes me, you know, look up to him that much more. And Robert Griffin III plays Would You Rather. Where are you guys coming up with these questions? Welcome back to Inside the Cleveland Browns. Spencer Drango, fifth round pick in this year's draft, is gearing up to compete for a roster spot in this year's Cleveland Browns. Well, we had a chance to catch up with him in this week's Browns Blitz. I fell in love with football uh, after my eighth grade year. Um, just the, the, the competitiveness and the, the camaraderie in the locker room that you get. Um, you know, it is really like nothing else, and my experiences so far have been nothing but great and unbelievable. And, you know, wouldn't change them for the world. They've only impacted me in a positive way. My memories of football growing up were with my family, whether that's watching the Super Bowl, um, you know, watching the hometown team. I was born in Indianapolis. So I was a Colts fan growing up. Um, you know, so Peyton and Jeff Saturday, Reggie Wayne, all those guys, um, you know, rooting for them and hoping, you know, they'd go all the way. And when they finally did, it was an awesome experience to, you know, be able to root for them and support them. The thing that I think people would find most surprising about me is that I am dyslexic. Um, you know, and, and it's helped me overcome a bunch of different things, just the adversity of that. Um, you know, trying to relearn how to read, relearn how to write and spell um, at, at, you know, as fifth grader is kind of difficult, but um, those lessons I learned transferred definitely over to football um, and, and life in general. So the NFL player I admire the most is Joe Thomas. Um, you know, his career speaks for itself. Um, and just being around him and seeing the type of person he is off the field um, just makes me, you know, look up to him that much more. Spencer Drango was an All-American this past season at Baylor, and what an awesome opportunity for him to come into the league and learn from one of the all-time greats, a future Hall of Famer, in Joe Thomas. Well, speaking of Baylor, it seems like there's Baylor guys all over the place. Robert Griffin III, our quarterback, he sits down this week to play a little Would You Rather. Take a look. Where are you guys coming up with these questions? And now we're going to play a game of Would You Rather? Here we go. Would you rather live without music or live without TV? I would rather live without TV. There's a lot of bad shows out there, but I feel like music, you can get by with that. Would you rather be a giant hamster or a tiny rhino? <laughs> so basically you're saying would you rather be a big fluffy teddy bear or a small badass? I'd, I'd be a small badass. All right, would you rather be constantly itchy or constantly sticky? <laughs> I don't know what you guys are getting at there, but I'd be constantly sticky, because itching can lead to other things, but if you're just sticky, you know, whatever. And here's the last one. Would you rather go bright purple when embarrassed or sweat so much you soak your clothes? Man, yeah, I mean, it's like you can wash your clothes, but you turn bright purple, you're going to be trending on Instagram and Twitter, so I'll probably just sweat out my clothes. And that's the game of Would You Rather. Well, a world without music would be awful, but how could you live without your favorite TV show? Inside the Cleveland Browns, right? Well, a fun alternative to that might be to actually hang out with some of the players from the Browns, and that's what some young athletes had the opportunity to do last week. It was the Cleveland Browns football camp. Take a look. The Cleveland Browns football camp held at First Energy Stadium helps kids 7 through 12 sharpen their skills by teaching them the fundamentals of football. Local high school and youth football coaches covered all the basics from passing and kicking to tackling and blocking. The three-day camp was highlighted by the arrival of the entire Browns rookie class on the last day to help impart some football wisdom on and off the field.
That looked like a ton of fun. Well, if you're interested in having your group join the team in any way, shape, or form, it's pretty simple. Log on to clevelandbrowns.com slash community. Dog Pound, don't go anywhere. We're coming right back. When we return, we hear from Browns running back coach Kirby Wilson. Fundamentals go from NFL City to NFL City. And former Browns running back Ernest Biner returns to work with the team. This is this, the field that is around here. That energy is, is coming back. Welcome back to Inside the Cleveland Browns. So Kirby Wilson has been an NFL coach for 18 years, and he's coached five players who rank in the top 25 for career rushing yards. Let's hear what he plans to bring to Cleveland. The natural ability for the position. Um, you gotta have the vision. You gotta have the instincts. You have gotta have change of directions. And most of the great ones have that. And then they all have it to a certain degree, but the great ones have a high level of all of those. And then you've got to have some ability to move laterally. You've got to have some avoidability to make people miss because in this league, a running back has to have some ability to create, get yards on his own a lot. And the, the truly great ones, special ones that are a cut above everyone else, they do that and they do it on a consistent basis. You, you're talking about a true warrior when you talk about Ernest Minor. You know what I mean? This is a guy who carried the mail in the toughest league in the world and was very successful. And I told my players, uh, they better steal everything they can from him because he's got so much knowledge. Why not? You know, they need to post him up every day and pat his pockets down and take everything that he has to offer and steal it and use it as their own. It's always been the same uh, in the sense that runners run, so you always got to, you know, practice and prepare ball security and teach it, ball security. They've always had to pass protect, uh, even more so now, and I think that's the bigger difference is that there is a premium on guys who can pass protect, meaning they only play on third down because they're outstanding at blitz pickup. And I think that's been the biggest difference from 1997 to 2016 for me, is the premium on pass protection for running backs. And uh, you always practice the fundamentals. That's That travels with you. Fundamentals go from NFL City to NFL City. Systems change, language changes, coaches changes, but fundamentals never change. What I've seen from uh, Crowell is that he's very explosive, very explosive. Uh, he is so quick to the hole, he can burst into a small crease, he can accelerate out of one. Uh, Duke is, is similar, uh, Duke is a lot quicker than Isaiah. He's got outstanding feet. He is a special playmaker now with the ball in his hands in the pass and running game. They're a great complement to each other. Uh, they do a great job of motivating each other, pushing one another, and, and they're young. They're not in their prime yet, and they're working toward that. They work hard every single day, and they're learning how to take that extra step to improve even more and to bring out every ounce of talent that they have. They're working their butts off to be great, and that's what I appreciate from them as the position coach. Well, with the evolving style of play, it's not a surprise to hear Coach Wilson talk about the importance of pass protection, and someone who knows a lot about that is former Browns running back Ernest Biner. So what does a movie screening have to do with how he became a guest coach for the Browns during the offseason? Let's find out. What actually brought me to Cleveland was uh, Believe Land. And I came over to visit uh, K-Mac. And, uh, you know, I know Sashi from, from down in Jacksonville, so had a chance to talk to Sashi some. But when I came over to visit uh, K-Mac, um, he was just happened to be walking out. And we exchanged, you know, greetings and hugs. And, and uh, he asked me to come back over Monday. From there, uh, everything just kind of fell into place. He's been great. Obviously, uh, Ernest played here when things were, were really good. Ernest has a very passionate place, you know, about the city, about the football team, about playing the position. He's a tremendous coach when he's coaching this league. Uh, he knows how to communicate with young men, and he's been very good for me because he'll see things sometimes that maybe I don't see. And, and the thing that I really respect about him, he's really a true Cleveland Brown, you know. He gets it, and he knows exactly what we're trying to do and what we're trying to accomplish. 
The process of reaching kids uh, or players on whatever level is communicate to them in different ways. Uh, Marty Schottenheimer taught me years ago that Ernest, to be a, a good coach, to do what you want to do, you have to be able to say the very same thing in as many ways as possible. You just got to have a little more patience and it'll be there. Okay. Just got because it's there. I can kind of feel things from their perspective as well. As a player, I was gifted to be able to have that, and that has really helped me to see things from a player's perspective and really have a different level of feel so I can be able to communicate that to the, to the guys. So uh, it helps them to get it. The potential that I see in the guys is, 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 is definitely uh, on the upward swing. Um, I think the, the way Hugh conveys, communicates with them, his matter-of-fact way of of talking to them, but also coaching them. I'm gonna make you great, you hear me? I'm gonna push you like you've never been pushed. Because you got so much ability, it ain't even funny. But it's an everyday thing. It's focus, it's mindset, because I know what you want. You gotta go get it. And I think that communication uh, is something that the guys can gravitate to. Um, I think Sashi uh, has a real good feel, you know, for people. He and Hugh, and the leadership that is that is coming about with this. This is this the field that is around here. That energy is is coming back. And um and I'm really proud and happy and, and blessed to be, you know, a, just a, a small part of that. Well, Ernest was also honored this week in the Cavs parade and you know it's really becoming increasingly apparent how much he means to Cleveland fans. Now keep it right here, Dog Pound. We'll be right back. Coming up next on Inside the Cleveland Browns, hear what teammates are saying about Joe Hayden's shoe collection. Yeah, Joe, Joe Hayden's uh, shoe collection in general is very impressive. Every day he comes to the facility, I'm looking like, dang, I ain't seen those before. Welcome back to Inside the Cleveland Browns. Now, this week has been so much excitement with the mm -hmm. Cavs. You're probably thinking, I need some new Cavs gear, right? Yeah, I typically think that, but my wife would probably say otherwise. <laughs> uh, I did, by the way, snag those new Kyries the day they came out. Ooh, well, if you weren't as quick as he was, maybe you can check out the Joe Hayden Shoe Store and uh, restock. This is Joe Hayden. We're at the grand reopening of the restock. So excited about it. Come check out some shoes. Super excited, man. I think that they understand that my, both my sneaker community, the people on Instagram and on Twitter that really love shoes and know that I have a passion for it because I don't tweet about it, Instagram about it all the time, just what shoes I'm wearing. So it's something that I really love and people that are into the culture, they, 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 they like it and they respect it. So they like to come out and see what, what, what Cleveland got to offer. One of my friends, he was running a sneaker store and uh, him and one of his dudes, they opened up one uh, just to buy themselves. So I just figured out, you know, man, I got a lot of contacts. I have I have a passion for it and um, it's something that I want to do. So there's no reason why I can't be able to open up my own store. And it kind of just got the idea and then ran with it. Well, Joe probably got the freshest kicks I've seen. Every day he come in the facility, I'm looking like, dang, I ain't seen those before. Yeah, Joe, Joe Hayden's uh, shoe collection in general is very impressive. Uh, I know he's got a wide range of sneakers, but um, some things I couldn't quite pull off, but I, I maybe wish I could. Some stuff with spikes on them and gold zippers and everything all over it, but he pulls it off. So I, I knew that he was a, he was a sneakerhead before I even met him. And uh, just for him to have the ambition to get a store and uh, you know, be able to do what he loves to do because he loves shoes, obviously, I think that's uh, that's really great to see. Uh, his shoe collection is mad crazy. I don't think I'm ever gonna have that many shoes, but you know he has, you know, from the retro Jordans to, to the Yeezys to the Lebrons. He got he got them all. So he, he, he definitely doing his thing with his shoes. So I, I salute him for that. He just always tells me whenever I'm whenever I'm ready to buy, he got me. So. <laughs> Honestly, I probably have about 600 of my shoes that I brought in about like get size because I, I changed sizes. I've changed from size uh, 10 to 11. So all of my old shoes, you know, put it, put them in here. But they're all of my shoes. When I say old shoes, they're shoes that I haven't worn before that are just a little older. I always make sure to pull my new Under Armour sneaks out before I wear them out in the field, and 
get the Joe Hayden seal of approval before I put him on my feet. And he said, uh, my shoes this year got a lot of swag, so I'm pretty excited about that. How you doing, yeah, Joe? Christmas. Oh, that's a good gift. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, I appreciate it. Well, I'm going to be back out there. You already know. Definitely wanted to have it in a general location where it's in the city, in Cleveland. So people that are, you know, anytime you're in downtown, you can just stop through the shop. It's an easy, accessible spot. I wanted it to be, no matter what, you could just fall through it anytime you're downtown. Man, you could come out here Tuesdays, Tuesday through Sunday. Uh, the schedule is very between um, 12 to 8. And uh, man, we're just downtown, right, right, right across the street from the queue, so it's very, very easy to access. Oh my goodness, 600 pairs of shoes. I don't know if I could get away with that. I don't know about you, but I am jealous because I'm a shoe head as well. <laughs> all right, Dog Pound, don't go anywhere. There is an all new Dog Pound report coming up next. And we'll be back as always next week, right here on News Channel 5.